Okay, Monet, hopefully you can hear this now. Okay, you want to test your sound? Hey, I can hear you now. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks. Good morning, everyone. If you are part of an applicant team and you'd like a sound check, please raise your hand within the Zoom. Greetings, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep, sounds pretty good, Andy. Good morning. Good morning. I have to work on my lighting so I look my best here. Is that better? Yeah. All right. Um, 
I see we have Susie, Monet, Adam on, and uh, and Mr. Coker and Miss Monaco. And Susie's going to jump in the pool today with her screen sharing. <laughs> okay. All right, it is going to be warm. Okay, I'm going to, going to turn off my video and um, uh, pull some things quickly together for our start in about four minutes. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Yay. Good morning, everyone. If you are part of an applicant team and you would like a sound check, please raise your hand. Yeah, this is Ken Coker. Sounds good, Ken. Cindy Dorn, you should receive a prompt. If you go ahead and answer that prompt, should be Hello. Able to... Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. So once we have tested the sound, if you can mute and unmute, if you can remember to mute and unmute, then we won't have to have that back and forth every time. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else before a minute or two here? Anyone else part of an applicant team that would like to do a sound check? Please raise your hand. Randy Pennington. Hi, Randy Pennington here. Sounds good. Thank you, Randy. 
Thank you. All right, it is now 1030 and this is Andy Gustafson serving as zoning administrator for this meeting and I'll turn my video on here. Um, I want to uh, welcome and thank those of you attending the meeting today for being with us. This is a, um, a regular zoning administrator meeting and because of the COVID public assembly um, prohibition, we are hosting these meetings online via Zoom. Um, and, and for those of you who are joining us by telephone, um, we, um, we will run this meeting as any other zoning administrator meeting. We have an agenda, we will take public, uh, we'll, we'll take um, a report from the staff and then opportunity for the applicant to speak and then take public testimony or comments after which I will deliberate. Today's meeting has um, a number of agenda items on them. So as we move through those, uh, each of each of you uh, will will have opportunity uh, to speak. When when um, you wish to comment, um, please raise your hand if you're joining us by Zoom, or press star nine uh, if by telephone, and we'll be able to recognize you. Now today's meeting, um, any item or action taken on an item may be appealed at 10, the, the first business day, full business day, uh, af after 10 days of this date, which would be, looking at my calendar, um, the 26th of October. So any matter today, um, if you wish to appeal the, the, the outcome, please contact the project planner and they will walk you through that process. Um, so before we begin, I do want to um, uh, say I'm going to change the order of the items on the agenda. Um, items two and three that are being presented by uh, planner Susie Murray. I want to move those to the top of the agenda and all the other items. So item 3.1 and then 3.4 will follow. Um, the, um, so with that, um, the first uh, thing I want to do is to uh, allow for public comment. And this is an opportunity at this meeting to speak on a matter that's not on the agenda. And if any member of the public wishes to um, speak, you have three minutes to do so now. Please raise your hand or press star nine to be recognized. Seeing none, I will um, move on to our public hearing uh, scheduled meeting items on our agenda. So um, the first item up is item 3.2, which is a minor design review permit for number five Snoopy Place and the project planner is Susie Murray. Susie, if you could give us your presentation. Thank you. Um. I'm working on uploading my, are you guys seeing my uh, presentation? Yes. <laughs> you can, uh, Susie, if you, there you go. Perfect. Yep. Yay. I'm, all right. Susie <laughs> comes into the 21st century. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Susie Murray. I'm the project planner and the first item before you today, um, zoning, Mr. Zoning Administrator, is the Schultz Archive Building. Subject property is located on F5 Snoopy Place, which is just off Hardy's Lane. And here uh, in this exhibit, you can see that the general plan land use designation is public institutional. And the zoning is uh, consistent with that public institutional and the site is also within the North Station area. Um, North Station area specific plan area as well as the uh, priority development area. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's a, a kind of a neighborhood context aerial. So you can see it's just south of Pollen Creek and it's really what's kind of uh, important to see here is that it is um, surrounded on to the north and to the south by other um, 
uh, activities related to the Schultz family and the Schultz Museum. Um, uh, to off to the uh, right or the east is um, multifamily residential. And uh, then to the, uh, to the west, you, also, you have the Children's Museum. Um, something else that I, I want to point out while we're, well, actually, I'll wait until the next, there's a better aerial. So there's, here are some elevations. Um, of the, it's at approximately 95, 9,505 square foot actually storage building. <clears throat> and these are the east, west, and north elevations. So the, the east elevation is what will be facing Hardy's Lane. Here's a site plan. So the, the, the way that the, the structure is, is situated on the parcel, it's about 100 feet or greater than 100 feet away from Hardy's Lane with a significant amount of landscaping to buffer that view. So this, this building will barely be able to be seen from the public right of way. Um, and it will be, you know, from uh, its, its neighbors to the north, south, and west, it will be visible. So there are uh, several required findings for, um, for uh, granting uh, design review. All of those findings were able to be met um, and is identified in the uh, resolution. Um, the project is exempt from the California Qual uh, Environmental Quality Act, uh, qualified for a categorical exemption. All noticing was done um, pursuant to the zoning code. Staff's review didn't re uh, result in any unresolved issues, and there have been no public comments received. So based on that, it's recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator grant design review to allow the construction of the Schultz without a T archive building at 5 Snoopy Place. And that concludes my presentation. And if there is anybody from the public attending this meeting, and if you have questions about it, here is my contact information. My direct phone is 543-4348. I will say that if you call me today, I understand I'm having problems with my voicemail. Uh, please be patient. You may wanna email me if you do have questions at smurray at srcity.org. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Susie. Um, and I'll add here that uh, anybody in attendance uh, from the public who wishes to comment, you certainly have opportunity to do so now or in a moment. Um, so don't hold your questions for Susie after this meeting. Please, please um, feel free to ask them here. But certainly, you, as Susie invited you, you can contact her after the hearing if you have follow up concerns. Um, so at this point, I want to uh, give the applicant or the applicant's team opportunity to uh, comment further. Uh, and if so, uh, please raise your hand. I do see Mr. Ken Coker's hand is raised. Um, Recording Secretary, can you, um, can you please recognize Mr. Coker? Oh, his hand is down now. Now it's up. <laughs> Okay, so he doesn't need me to unmute him because we already did a sound check. He just needs to unmute within Zoom. Uh, thank you. My name is Ken Coker. I'm the architect for the project. Um, I just want to point out a few uh, design issues that we have when, in developing the design for this project. Um, <clears throat> one is the primary one is that we wanted to downplay the the visual impact of the structure. This is really a, a storage facility for the artwork and memorabilia of Charles Schultz. Uh, there will be no employees dedicated to this building. Uh, primarily, they come from the studio, from Creative Associates, and from the museum. Uh, there will be some workstations in the facility for uh, documenting artwork, uh, for photographing, and also for uh, creating uh, any materials that were, are going to be loaned to other museums. We will have uh, truck traffic 
probably about one a month to, to bring back or to pick up uh, museum material uh, that's going to be on loan. The building is, uh, is a metal building. Uh, it's designed that way because we want to maximize the amount of uh, fire resistance and also we are using insulated uh, roof and wall panels to, to hopefully create a, a net zero building with the use of solar panels. It'll be all electric uh, with no gas service to the facility. The facility was designed to meet National Park Service Museum uh, storage requirements. And that is partly why you see no landscaping immediately adjacent to the building to reduce pest infestation. So with that, I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak about the building and um, open it up for any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Coker. Um, so, and I appreciate your clarifying the use of the building and, and uh, the design intent. Um, that's very helpful. And um, I, I have no further questions for you regarding this proposed new building addition to that uh, Schultz Center facility. Um, at this point, it is um, the public's opportunity to comment. And if you wish to do so, please raise your hand, uh, whether you're, you know, participating by Zoom or star nine by telephone, and you'll be recognized. When you do uh, comment, please give your name and uh, please. I see no one in attendance raising their hand or um, pressing star nine. So I will close the um, public comment portion of this item and now um, take action on it. Um, so this is a very, I, I say an organic addition to that facility. Um, Susie, if you were to uh, go back to um, the, the list of findings, I think it, that you had there, exactly. Um, I think Susie's presentation and her resolution uh, does establish the basis for approving the project as proposed. Um, and I will say that um, the design work, uh, including the work on the site for landscaping, will really make this addition uh, appear as though it's been on the property all along. It's functionally related to the, to the uh, facility. Um, and it, it, in that way, is very logical and, and will become a seamless part of the landscape uh, setting and use. So um, I very much uh, am pleased to uh, approve this design review and um, applaud the project team for bringing forward such a good project. Thank you. Um, so now we can move on to the next item, which is item 3.3, also presented by Susie Murray, and it's for another mi minor design review at 1031 Carroll Lane for a duplex residential project. Susie, can you give your presentation, please? I am trying, so sh bear with me a sec. Can you see it now? Perfect. Okay, and you can hear me okay as well. Um, the next project is the Sandalwood Duplex Unit. Uh, the property is located at 1031 Carroll Lane, which is over near the fairgrounds. So the proposal here is to, to build a duplex within the Sandalwood subdivision. And the Sandalwood subdivision was approved, mm, gosh, I think it was in, I want to say 2011, either 2006 or 2011, how's that? Um, but part of that Sandalwood subdivision included 
uh, one property that would be developed with a duplex unit and a condition of approval for that um, duplex unit was to um, it was required to get design review, as is all attached housing in Santa Rosa. So um, uh, the, the back, back in those days and currently, the, the thought of having um, single family and attached housing provides a diverse type of housing within neighborhoods. So um, the aerial, um, the larger of the two aerials here is uh, what the property looked like actually several years ago um, before it had been developed. And you can see where the map has been recorded. The star marks the, the spot there of, of the development site. And all of those, those little lines on those lawns are where the subdivision map was recorded. <clears throat> on the larger uh, blow up in the lower uh, right hand uh, section of the screen shows uh, the project well under construction. I believe it's much further along at this point. And the arrow points to the one parcel remaining that will be um, developed with this duplex. The general plan land use designation in the area is low density residential, which allows development from two to eight units per acre. And the standard implementing zoning district for that, that general plan land use designation is the R16 single family residential zoning district for which this is zoned. Here is a, a sample, uh, or a sample, I'm, look at, I'm looking at my header and I apologize, I didn't update that. Um, I, uh, this is a, what the architecture will look like. Um, this is uh, facing, this is the, uh, if you're looking at it from east of the building or from Carroll Lane, <clears throat> and, and the, the duplex that faces Linden, will have um, those, the, the kind of the aqua, browner, tan material or beige materials, and then the, the kind of greenish gray and gold will be uh, facing east. Both homes um, have two car garages. They both have three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. They both have front porches, it's very welcoming. And it's done in um, similar exterior materials as uh, the rest of the subdivision. So again, there are the required findings. Um, this project was um, actually uh, considered in a, or as was, the scope of this project was included in, in a uh, mitigated negative declaration that was also adopted by uh, the uh, Planning Commission uh, back when the map was approved. Um, so no further uh, environmental uh, review was necessary. So staff's um, review did not result in any unresolved issues. In fact, I don't think we uncovered any issues at all. Um, all noticing was done in compliance with the zoning code and no comments have been received from any neighbors. So with that, it's recommended by the Planning and Economic Development Department that the Zoning Administrator grant design review to allow the construction of the Sandalwood duplex unit located at 1031 Carroll Lane. <clears throat> and again, my name is Susie Murray. I'm the planner assigned to the project. If uh, you have any questions, feel free to give me a call at 543-4348. That's my direct line. Or you can email me at smurray at srcity.org. And that concludes my presentation. I know that we have a representative from um, the applicant team on the phone. I don't know if they plan to make a presentation. Thank you, Susie. Again, a great um, overview of the project. Uh, appreciate your putting those elevations there on the screen for everyone to look at. Um, at this point, I invite the applicant or the applicant's team to comment or add uh, additional information. Please raise your hands if you wish to do so. And uh, Rick Rosenbaum has raised the hand. Can we recognize him? Yeah, hi, can you uh, all hear me? Rick Rosenbaum here, representing uh, Lennox Homes. 
Yes. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I think uh, Susie did an excellent job presenting. She covered all my key points, um, including that the project is well under construction. And actually we have some folks who have either moved in or just moving into the neighborhood recently. And that the, du um, the duet unit, duplex unit will be built with the same uh, high quality exterior materials that the single family homes are being built with. I think that's a key point. There's no changing of materials here. High quality siding and uh, trim materials and windows and uh, a distinctive color scheme to kind of differentiate the two units. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, the commission may have. Okay. Um... I, I really don't. I mean, I think the um, the presentation of the building is uh, quite excellent. I really think while it is a duet structure um, and it is attached at the ground floor, the, the offsets at the ground floor between the two buildings and the separation on the second floor really does help to distinguish the two individual units from one another as well as the, the, the color paint scheme and the, and the roof material. So uh, I think the team should be commended and, and uh, for that, as well as the, a company or, or proposing a design here that does a good job of, um, of tying in with the other homes that are being built in the subdivision today. So I think the presentation showed that very clearly. Um, so before I go further, I do want to give opportunity for the public who might be in attendance that wish to comment. And if you wish to do so now, please raise your hand or press star nine. Right, I am looking at the list of attendees and I, I see no one wishing to comment at this point. So I'll close the public comment period of this uh, item and uh, and and uh, at this point, um, I really have no questions uh, of the applicant regarding the design of the project. I, I, I again, I think it's um, well done, and and will um, blend in. But probably most importantly, provide an opportunity for uh, market rate affordable. Um, housing in, in a otherwise single family detached subdivision project. So appreciate uh, this, this project moving forward. It's a great sign in these times that um, developers and property owners are seeing the opportunity to build and create the housing that we need. So with that, I'm very pleased to approve this design review as proposed and uh, to allow this subdivision to move forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so now, Mr. Ross, item 3.1, um, your opportunity to present is now before you, if we could take up that item at this time. Yes, sir, I'm gonna get it open and presented to you now. <laughs> I don't see, oh, there we go. And this is for a sign variance at 333 Cleveland Avenue. Thank you. Correct. Uh, can you see this screen, the PDF? Yes. Okay, great. So this project is a sign variance for the Splash Express car wash at 3333 Cleveland Avenue. Um, I am interim senior planner, Adam Ross. Uh, the the requested sign variance is to exceed the 30 square feet of signage allowed on the site and install three signs consisting of two wall mounted signs, uh, both being 17 square feet and 38 square feet and one 17 square foot freestanding sign for a combined 72 square feet of total signage. Um, so I wanna make a correction on this. Uh, when, when reviewing the sign square footage of the monument sign, um, the, the numbers, the 17 square feet reflect the oval shape. However, um, 
there's kind of like a gray area on how you would in the zoning code, I believe, on how you would um, uh, uh, measure it overall. Um, in this case, we are applying a rectangular shape in equivalence of the length and um, uh, the rise and run of the the length and width of the sign monument sign. So it's not 17 square feet for the monument sign, it's 24 square feet for the monument sign. So that number uh, is 79 total square feet rather than 72. Um, and that was probably confusing. So if you have a question about it, I can, I can reiterate that. Um, but within zoning code section 20-38.060, uh, table 3-10, it limits the total square footage for the signage allowed to one foot per each primary building linear square feet plus half a foot for secondary. Uh, this results in a total of 30 square feet of the signage for the site, which is why this variance request is being made. So this is the uh, project. Um, as you can see, there is the frontage, the main frontage, the east building elevation. Um, here's the 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 uh, rear of it, but it, um, I think I'd like to get a better image here of the actual building. But on this site that you can kind of see up here, um, this is the freestanding sign. This is the let's see here. this is the freestanding sign um, that is 24 square feet measured uh, um, length. Uh, sorry, I struggling here to to give you the exact words, but the height and the width um, is 24 square feet for that area. Here's the smaller um, Splash Express sign, which faces the um, north building. So it would face the north side of the property. And then we have the um, larger sign facing uh, Cleveland Avenue on the building. Um, here is the breakdown of the proposed sign uh, square footages. Again, this should be reflected as 24 square feet. Um, and uh, staff's in supportive of this, uh, essentially because the square footage that would be allowed by code is pretty restrictive. You know, 30 square feet to fit th uh, one sign even is is a bit off or a bit restrictive. Um, so uh, a variance requested for that additional square feet is supported by staff to allow them to have three uh, standard allowable signs, which um, most other businesses can also have without a variance, um, depending on their square footage. And this kind of structure is unique to this, to the drive-through car wash uh, use. So again, with that, the Planning and Economic Development Department recommends that the zoning administrator by resolution approve a sign variance for the Splash Express car wash located at 3333 Cleveland Avenue. Thank you for that, Adam. Um, and can you, uh, can I ask you to put the site plan back on to the um, screen to look at for a moment? I just had a brief question about it. Yes. Is it this one? No, the, the site plan. Do, do you have the site plan available? Yes, hold on one second. I'm gonna stop sharing and pull it up. Um, so as Adam's doing that, I, I do acknowledge the sign area correction <clears throat> and that, um, that there would be changes to the resolution uh, to reflect the 24 square feet, the measurement of that sign area, and also the total area being requested in this case. Um, Adam, are you uh, yeah. pulling the project file or whatever to? Yes, I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. All right, so this, um, I just wanted to uh, provide this visual. What I wanted to comment on or ask you to comment on as well is the relative um, 
length to width ratio of that lie. So our sign standards are um, tied to the frontage length, correct? Uh, in terms of the total sign area allowed? Yes, of the building. Yes. Oh, sign area is tied to the width of the building facing correct. the frontage. I see. And, and in this case, um, we can see here that this use and the structure that supports it um, is the structure is relatively narrow compared to what otherwise might be expected to be developed on a site under this zoning with a much larger footprint, much of that circulation area and parking for um, vehicle vacuuming, I guess there on the south side of the building would normally be expected to be occupied by um, by a structure of a much greater width and thus uh, would be um, allowed much more signage probably in the range which is uh, which is um, being requested today above and beyond what is would be strictly allowed uh, based on this current building width okay so I stated what I think <laughs> I wanted comments on so I don't know if you, you wanted to concur with that Adam or do you want to add anything else well I think I think that you did a better uh, clear cut presentation than I just did so I appreciate that <laughs> okay. um, I just wanted to point out as well uh, within the sign code um, you, you go by the building frontages um, and then there's also a limitation of a hundred total square feet of sign area for a site um, in this case, they're right under 80 square feet. So they're still within, you know, say you had a much larger building and you had 120 square feet of uh, 120 linear square feet, which would translate to 120 square feet of sign area. The zoning code would then limit them to just 100. Excellent. Um, and in this, they're still under that. Excellent. Thank you for that. that that's valuable. Okay. With that, let's uh, give the applicant opportunity if they wish to uh, speak on this matter. Uh, if so, please raise your hand. And I don't know if Jonathan, is, Jonathan Ramos is the applicant. I'm not sure if he was able to make it on. There was a scheduling conflict with, uh, in, on his end. Jonathan is um, attending and has raised his hand. Great, thanks. If we can be recognized. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, Jonathan Ramos with Ramos and Associates. Um, we did have a very challenging site to deal with for this car wash. Uh, that's why the building is so narrow uh, for all the circulation from both uh, traffic requirements, fire department requirements, so on and so forth. Um, and I would greatly appreciate if uh, we could get this variance approved for this uh, additional signage above and beyond the 30 square feet. I did uh, strategically place the monument sign as far back from Cleveland Avenue as possible uh, with, you know, staying within the, the zoning or the signage guidelines, but also uh, keeping in mind uh, site visibility, uh, vision triangles, and uh, making sure there was no additional hazards added by uh, putting a monument sign on site. And that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you. Um, okay, I appreciate that. Um, you, you underscored the challenges of the site development for this use and how it constrained the lineal width of the building. So I appreciate that. Um, now's opportunity, I give opportunity to the public uh, who wish to comment on this project, please raise your hand or press star nine if you have called in and you'll be recognized. All right, seeing none, um, I will close the public presentation portion of this meeting. And um, again, this, uh, this project is coming forward with a very strong basis for supporting the recommended or requested variance. Um, clearly, as we, we outlined here in the presentation, uh, the building is abnormally narrow because of site constraints and its use type. Um, and we could expect that any other business would have a lot more allowed signs. 
and particularly in this case as well, the proposed uh, 80 square feet of sign area does not exceed the maximum otherwise allowed up to 100. So this is, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to uh, grant this variance as a, a remedy to a practical constraint. Yes. Mr. Gustafson, uh, I just wanted to um, maybe enter into the, the record some some cleanup of the resolution, uh, just for specificity of of the project before you, and I could I could read that out loud. Absolutely. So um, yeah, and I was going to say the um, uh, approve the project with a modified uh, description to list the correct sign size and total area. Uh, 24 feet, and, and I think, uh, Adam, you said 80 square feet total. Yes, one second. Okay, so I will read it out loud now. Um, so in the, um, let's see here. My apologies, one second. I just want to be specific. So for the first paragraph um, of the resolution, um, I want to read into record that um, the language be adjusted for more specific um, uh, representation of the project and it reads as the zoning the Santa Rosa zoning administrator has completed the review of your sign variance application to install three signs two wall signs and one monument sign totaling 80 square feet when 30 square feet total sign area is allowed in zoning per zoning code section 20-38.060 please be advised that your variance has been granted based on your project description and an official approved exhibit dated September 8, 2020. The Santa Rosa Zoning Administrator has based this action on the following required findings in Zoning Code Section 20-52.060 G2. Excellent. And um, does the resolution final paragraph change to reflect the new total sign area number? Um, so it's not referenced there right now, um, but we can reiterate that as well, that same language uh, of the sign spec uh, specifics. Yes, and I think um, if you could read the first sentence of the last paragraph with the insertion of the total sign area, correct okay. sign area. This sign variance for the Splash Express car wash is hereby approved on this 15th day of October, 2020. Provided conditions are complied with and work has commenced within two years from approval date. Um, so let's see, let me reread that. Is hereby approved. The sign variance for... Um, 80 square feet. For 80 square feet of sign area is approved on this 15th day of October, 2020. Perfect. Okay. All right. With those modifications um, to the resolution, uh, this requested variance is approved. Thank you. All right. Let's now move on to item 3.4. And this is a minor conditional use permit for 125 Patterson Lane concerning a um, side yard setback facing the street, um, a reduction of a side yard setback facing the street on a corner lot. Mr. Ross is the project planner. Would you please um, give your presentation? Yes. I'm going to pull it up and then share the screen. One second, please.
So this project before you is a um, minor conditional use permit for a uh, fence in height greater than three feet within a corner side setback for the property located at 1925 Peterson Lane. Um, a which the project includes a, a six foot fence with a two foot lattice on top of that. Uh, a building permit is required for that. This is a um, residential PD zoning district, uh, which implements a R16 um, zoning, zoning district equivalent. Um, and so as you see here, it's a, let me zoom in a little bit. This is a neighboring property, this top one. So here is the, the location um, of the fence. C is a proposed 12 foot gate. Uh, this whole area is six feet. Um, here's the vision triangle represented and then a three foot fence um, within the vision triangle. So here's what the rendering is. So you have a, um, a drawn version of what the fence would look like. It's a solid wood fence right up to the property line. Um, and it looks like there's a two foot cutback as it turns in and then you have the three foot fence um, here in this location. And here's another image of what it would look like on the property site. There is, uh, I wanted to bring up that with this property, there is a, a code enforcement case for a um, driveway paved on the side of the house located here. It's not shown in this picture. Um, and so in order for this project to be approved, it has to have resolution for the um, code enforcement case in which staff has prepared um, four conditions of approval for that um, and also uh, uh, and, or, and I believe the code enforcement officer is is in attendance um, in case any questions should be needed to be raised there. The applicant has reviewed the um, conditions of approval and, and found them acceptable. Uh, with that Planning uh, staff has planning and economic development department recommends approval of the con minor conditional use permit for the six foot fence within a side 15 foot side corner setback. Thank you, Adam. Can you um, share again that image or that screen? I'll ask you the question and maybe I, I need to ask the applicant in a moment, but it appears and, and you said the, um, the fence is at the property line, but then there are these squiggles at the bottom of the fence drawn in that are labeled shrubs. Are those intended to be in front of the fence or behind the fence? Or, and, you know, I can ask the applicant. Yeah, I think the applicant, it might be this two foot cutback. Um, maybe that's supposed to be a two foot setback for the fence line, but yes, we should ask the applicant. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, can you, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll return to, to the findings later. Okay, uh, now's the opportunity for the applicant to comment. Uh, if you wish to do so, please raise your hand and you'll be recognized. Shen Monaco, please. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, so we were advised that the uh, fence needed to have that two foot cutback for the shrubs to be um, in that space. So that's what we complied with um, when we were doing the initial um, processing of the application. I see. Thank you for that. Um, can you describe the, the need or purpose for the fencing as, as you're proposing it in this case? Sure, so um, as you can see from the picture, we have two of uh, bedrooms that are on the side of our home, um, both of which have children that are within them. So that was our main concern is that we'd like to um, create a space that is um, a safe distance away where we can enclose that space um, for those bedrooms. 
Um, the need for the fence would be to gain access from the side to do, um, we're planning on doing garden beds within that space as well. And so it would just give us access from the side um, to be able to enter to do the gardening from that, that place. Okay, um, all right. And uh, you have created a, a driveway, which is a part of a um, code enforcement and, and action. What is the, you have a driveway access to the garage. What's the intent of uh, providing additional vehicle access to the, to the property? So it wasn't for vehicle access. We intended for that to be a slab to then put planter boxes on. It was just an extra foundation that we could use as a flat service or, you know, a almost flat service that we could put something on that would be stable. Um, it's not going to be for cars or vehicle access or boat storage or RV storage or any storage of any type of automobile or, or boat. But you did put in a curb cut, is that correct? No, we did not. Uh, and that's the code. That was the code violation. Okay. Um, yes, if I could clarify, it's um, so it, it, it uh, appears as though it could be a driveway and that a curb cut would be required if it were to be a driveway to be. Um, uh, but as the applicant stated, they're not intending it to be a driveway. Um, okay. Um, I, you know, a part of the public record, um, Google Maps does show a, a, a vehicle parked in the, the side yard there. Uh, I don't know if it is, continues to be there, so. No, it's not. All right, um, and and describe the the type of material of that you would construct this fence out of. Um. Sure. So we are going to continue with the fencing um, that is consistent with the um, the fencing in the neighborhood. It would be a redwood fence um, with the redwood lattice, and then the front portion, um, the three foot fence, that's going to be constructed out of the hog pen. Um, the see-through panels with also just a, the redwood um, edging around that. Okay, all right. Okay, well, thank you for those clarifying uh, points or answers. Um, is there anything else you wanna add regarding the need for the fence and its design? Um, well, the need for the fence would maximize the space of our lot to be able to use that space, provide protection for the bedrooms that are there. Um, we also have, um, you know, animals, we have, two, we have a dog, so it would be nice to be able to have that extra space as well. Um, overall aesthetic of it would match um, other fences that are in the neighborhood. I submitted pictures that are consistent um, with the neighborhood um, aesthetics. It's a kitty corner across the street from us. Um, it'll basically be matching their fence. And so for us, it would utilize our space and create protection for our property. All right, thank you. And Adam, do you have those pictures um, showing the neighbors fence? Um, I do not, but I could pull some up uh, quickly. You, you don't have the applicant's pictures. You you have access to others. I'm sorry. So, can you clarify um, the applicants? The applicant said they submitted uh, pictures showing similar fences in the area. Did, do you have those? I, I realize this project got changed from one planner to the next, um, but the, the um, information should have come to you. I can uh, find those quickly if you I'll give me just a minute. We go to Google Maps to take a look at, um, take a look at the streetscape there. But okay, well, let me first, uh, before we do that, let's uh, give opportunity for anyone in the public or in attendance that wishes to comment to do so now, please raise your hand. And again, um, if you're calling in, press star nine. Okay, we have Megan Lackey has raised her hand. Could uh, she be recognized? Hi there, yes, this is Megan Lackey over in Code Enforcement. I'm the Code Enforcement Officer of Record for the property. Um, this is a question for the property owner. 
I do have uh, a picture taken on 10-9 um, with an, a stored inoperable vehicle behind that fencing. Has that vehicle since been removed? Um, we are removing that actually, and it'll be done this week. Okay. It's an old Ford. It's an old Ford truck that my husband purchased and needs to have moved. <laughs> sure. And part of the um, code enforcement is that um, we can't, you can't have a stored inoperable vehicle in setbacks um, yes. or on um, outside of the garage in rear yards. So thank you so much for clarifying that. All right, thank you. Um, is there any other, is there any member of the public that wishes to comment at this point? Seeing none, I will uh, close the public meeting and now uh, deliberate. I, you know, the, these, uh, thank you Adam for the picture. Um, so corner lots in, in subdivisions such as this often have a challenge because of the setback areas, the buildings are placed further from both streets and the result is a reduced rear yard. And um, this provision that allows for that 15 foot side yard setback to be reduced with a use permit is there as a remedy in instances where a property owner of a corner lot um, may be deprived of the rear yard area that other homeowners or other residential properties in the area are benefiting from. And, um, and, and, and the conditional use permit um, will allow that reduction when there's not a health safety issue. And that's why there's a vision triangle requirement that in this case is being, being met and is not an issue. Um, but then there's the requirement that the resulting fence reduction is um, compatible with the neighborhood setting. And that's really the big issue here with the proposed fence. And on the screen we see, I believe, is the fence that's located on the opposite corner of the applicant's property. And um, it is um, a kind of lot that really illustrates what I, what I, um, uh, stated was the, the remedy or the reason for the reduced uh, setback area. This, this lot, and there's some other corner lots that really have limited rear yard area. And I think we can probably, if Adam, if, can you take that to a, a two, yeah, two dimensional zoom? Um, yeah, you can see there, uh, point out the, the project site first. If you can position that right. And then um, the rear yard area there with what is essentially an L-shaped house is about, if we were to measure that, I think it's a little more than 2,000 square feet. If you go across the street to the uh, example, you can see that right off the bat, the rear yard area is substantially below that area, it's very constrained. That's a classic example where there is a justification for the reduction of that side yard setback to allow a fence to create the rear yard enclosure and privacy that other property owners in the area um, can expect. In this case, we don't have that circumstance. So I'm, I'm very, um, very much hesitant um, if, if we can uh, look again at the, the site, Adam, if you can zoom into the property a little bit further to give us uh, a detail. That's um, the extent of the zoom. Okay, that's, that's perfect. Um, and, and, and so I think if we were to look in the area, we really don't see any fences that are built right to the back of the property line. And um, doing so creates a couple problems in terms of neighborhood character. It begins to impinge upon the sidewalk um, in terms of the pedestrian experience. It doesn't, uh, it, it, it reduces the public streetscape 
um, and also creates a uh, pretty much a no man's land. Now I recognize um, the applicant intends to have a two foot planting strip in front of the fence. It's not very, it's not indicated that way, but it's noted that way on the plan. Um, so I think what I will, um, in this case, I can support um, the side yard setback reduction, but no less than um, five feet from the back of the side of the, the back of the sidewalk. Um, that fence location would provide um, uh, the privacy enclosure for the children's rooms, as well as for the um, pets that are on the property. Um, and uh, would not uh, reduce the public street visual character, nor would it encroach upon um, the um, uh, use of the sidewalk. The, um, the resulting five foot planting strip that would remain is actually um, probably more suited to, actually, to allow plants to thrive and will help to encourage, I think, the, this property owner or future property owners of, the, uh, of this home um, to maintain that area. Um, so with that modification does, and I asked the applicant this question, is that acceptable to you um, subject to the conditions that have been presented um, by the project planner? Um, well, if I may, Adam, if you could provide um, the aerial view for 1941 Peterson Lane, which is just um, north of our property. So if you pull the map down, um, you'll go up one block and you'll see basically the property is identical to our property in size and shape and landscaping. See their fence um, has a two foot cutback from the street. Um, theirs is being used in uh, a particularly same way as ours. The only exception would be is that their yard um, has a pool in it. So instead of grass like ours does, theirs has a pool. So my question to you is that there's no shrubbery or any type of um, items that are being done on this. Um, one, it doesn't look like it's five feet cut back from that sidewalk. Um, and so my question to you would be um, if their plans were acceptable for building, um, could we duplicate what they have as theirs instead of a five cut so we can maximize the space that's within our yard? Um, first, I don't know if that fence was, was uh, placed there with a conditional use permit or not, you know, mm -hmm. it's legal. Um, can I, can you, uh, is that fence a solid board fence or is it a fence that's, uh, yeah, oh yeah, it is. Okay, got it. Um, so I think here this fence illustrates the point I make about the need for a wider landscape area. Um, they've clearly abandoned it and is, is just basically kind of a, a very harsh transition between the back of sidewalk and the fence. There's no landscaping there. Um, five feet will provide uh, an opportunity to make that really viable landscaping and, and uh, reduce the visual impact of that uh, fencing along the, the streetscape. So um, I do note that in the immediate vicinity that there are some corner lots with side yard fencing that are no less than five feet and, and that in this case would be conforming with that, um, that type of um, fencing in the area. So um, I will approve today uh, a modified uh, resolution with a condition that the fence be located five feet from the back of sidewalk uh, using the materials and, and the landscaping proposed. Um, so with that modification, um, this action is, is appealable um, and within 10 calendar days. I think I said the 25th of, of um, October, is that right? Yeah.
I, Mr. Gustafson, I also have uh, four conditions of approval that I'd like to read into record that would be applied. These are the ones that I discussed that the applicant had reviewed and, and accepted. Okay. Uh, so the first of the four is a building permit is required for construction of a fence exceeding seven feet in height. Obtain a building permit for the approved project. Number two is the existing concrete pad referenced in code enforcement case CE 20-0222 shall not be used as a driveway or long-term storage, mobile home, trailer, airplane, boat, or, mo or other motor vehicle or parts of any of those vehicles in compliance with zoning code section 20-31.110D2. The third one is code enforcement case number CE 20-0222 must be closed prior to issuance of a building permit or commencing construction of approved project. And the fourth one is the gate mechanism shown on the approved design shall be constructed in compliance with the 2019 California Building Code section 3202.2. Uh, doors, which reads that doors or windows shall not project or open into the public right of way. Um, those, those um, two of those uh, conditions of approval are, are basically just um, notifying in the record that compliance with the existing code is required. Um, Thank you. And the and the uh, the third the fifth condition would be to relocate the fence five feet from the back of sidewalk and maintain landscaping within that um, five foot setback area. Would you like me to read that one as well into the record or? Please. Okay. So uh, the project shall relocate the fence to five feet uh, behind the back of sidewalk and install planting within the setback area. All right. Um, thank you very much and uh, now we'll move on to, I think the last item on our agenda. No, actually we have two more items. Um, the next item is um, item 3.5, minor design review, 605 Ware Road. And Monet uh, is the project, Monet Sikali is a project planner. Monet, are you ready to make your presentation? I am ready and thank you, Mr. Gustafson. So let me share my PowerPoint, so you can see that? Yes, thank you. Okay, as you mentioned, the project is a minor design review for a property located at 625 Ware Avenue. Uh, the design, the, the fence will be up to six feet and uh, it will be placed three feet behind the sidewalk. The picture below shows the site as it is today. It is a parking lot for a use the views on the site. And the reason that the applicant wants to add the fence there is to prevent any unwelcome person and also to provide more security for the site. Next page. Okay. Okay. Um, this is the site. It's located at the corner of Rutledge and Ware Avenue. It is zone CG General Commercial. And here is the general plan land use, which is retail and business services. On the left side, the red line shows location of the proposed fence and gates. And the picture on the right side shows the type of the fence that the applicant is proposing. It will be six feet and it will not require any building permit. The notice was sent to the neighbors within 600 feet and staff did not receive any comments from neighbor. The project has been reviewed in compliance with California Environmental Quality Act and it qualifies for exemption class three in that the proposed fence is an accessory structure and staff recommendation is approval. With that, oh, I should keep it here. The proposed project has been reviewed in compliance, as I mentioned, and staff recommendation is approval. 
and that was my presentation here is my email address and my phone number if anyone has a question they can contact me thank you thank you very much um, is the uh, applicant in attendance and do you wish to comment if so please raise your hand I'm not sure if they are attending the meeting today. Okay, thank you, Manet. All right, um, uh, and then now, is there any member of the public that wishes to comment on this matter? If so, please raise your hand or press star nine. Seeing none, I'll close the public meeting. All right, well, this, I understand this, uh, the need for this fence. Uh, my question, Monet, is the intent or um, my, my main concern is that the, the fence enclosure would allow for the, the, the creation or, or the use of the parking lot area as a contractor storage yard. Um, did the applicant's project statement state clearly the intent of the um, enclosed area? that'll be created? They didn't mention that, but I remember when I talked to them over the phone, they said the main reason they want to have a fence there is to prevent from people throwing trashes there. And they had some, I, not, I can't remember, but there were people like unwelcome and a lot of people going to the site. But they didn't mention anything about the storage. And, and if I'm not wrong, I need to see the zoning code, if they want to use any outdoor storage in the property that is zone CG, they might need to get the use permit. I have to look in our zoning code and I can look right now and confirm it if you want. Okay. Um, I think uh, maybe we can, we can say this in the record or on the resolution, the purpose of the fenced enclosure area. And I don't, let, let, me, let me get the, um, the resolution in front of me. This sure. is three point. Five. Um, what I would like to do is to say, no, this is, I'm sorry. I don't have the resolution in front of me on, uh, this is item 3.5, correct? Can you, can you share that on the screen? Okay, can you see Mr. Gustafson? Yes, so the fence, um, will it surround the entire property? or will it surround the parking lot area? In, it's, in the well, it's almost around the entire property. Um, I would like the, um, the resolution, and it may be in one of the findings, the intention that was stated by the applicant that it enclosed the parking lot and prevent trespass um, be, be made part of the record mm -hmm. so that um, should ever there be a discussion in the future about a contractor storage yard or you know, that type of activity, this resolution would be very clear that the fencing was um, for the purpose of, of uh, trespass prevention uh, within the um, the parking lot area primarily. I do see by the by the photos that there are materials that are stored in, in a portion of the site. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it is visible from the street, which is, I don't know, not really great practice. Um, and I don't want that to expand. Okay. I think, um, uh, The fifth bullet point for finding. Will enclose the outdoor parking area. And is that 
here. I'm going to look at the site plan separately here. And it is an open fence, right? It's not solid board. Correct. It's a wired open fence. Um, yeah, I think if we were to do that, <clears throat> Uh, outdoor parking area and side yard. Period. And could you please underline the addition there for the record? Like this? I, I would add after the word yard uh, to provide more security. There you go. So I think I think that with that change, I'm comfortable that this resolution, the intent of the resolution and fencing, um, I think you can, you only needed to um, underline the addition of parking area and side yard too. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Um, could you uh, save that and then that's part of the, the record and okay. then the final resolution will have that language in it without it being underlined. That's the rest I'll sign. Um, so um, I'll approve the um, the requested, and it's a it's an open fence. It's not a solid board fence, correct? It's a metal. I wouldn't call it. Um, it's not chain link. It's no correct. I it's can. A it's a vertical wrought iron fence with the panels, right? Correct. Here, okay. I'm sharing it again. This is the type of fence they are proposing. Perfect. Okay. Great. So, with that minor um, clarification to finding number five in the resolution, um, I'll approve this. Uh, what is this? Design review or use permit? I forget. Um, Minor design review. DR18. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, now we are on to the last item of the agenda, which is a um, minor conditional use permit for 1289 Sebastopol Road for mobile food vending. Thank you. And Monet is a project planner. Thank you again. So as you mentioned, this is a minor use permit for a property along Sebastopol Road Avenue. The project name is Mexifornia. The site is located, on, oh, okay. The hours of operation will be 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And there are two, there's two other mobile food vendors on the site that they are rotating and they are located in the front of the property. The proposed one will be located in the back as it shows in the red color here. And this is a type of mobile food vendor machine. I mean, mobile food truck. And the site is zone CG, general commercial, and the general plan land use is retail and medium density residential. Mobile food vendor car, mobile food vendors are only allowed along Sebastopol Road through a minor use permit and the applicant has submitted minor use permit for the proposed project. Mobile food vendors has to be placed more than 200 feet from another mobile food on the another side. And on this plan here, as you can see, it shows the distance from two other trucks that are parked on the other parcel and on the same parcel. And the distance between them is more than 200 feet. And also the applicant has provided an agreement to use the uh, sanitary bathroom on the site within the existing building located at 1289 Sebastopol Road. Uh, the proposed project has been reviewed in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act and it qual qualifies for a class four exemption under section 15304 in that the mobile food vendor is a minor temporary use of land having negligible or no permanent effects on the environment. 
a notice was sent out to neighbors within 600 feet and I did not receive any calls or comments or concerns regarding the proposed project and staff recommendation is approval. And again, here is my information and that will conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is the applicant or a member of the applicant's team present and wish to comment on this matter? I am not sure. They did not tell me that they will attend. Okay. Um, and uh, seeing none, I will now open it up to public comment. Is there any member of the public that wishes to comment on this matter? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, I will close the public comment period um, of this item. And um, let's see, I think um, the, the only question I had or concern really here is this is the third uh, mobile food vendor on the property. And we, we do allow for multiple vendors on the same property um, and our our ordinance however does uh, provide for or require 200 foot separation from a vendor on a separate property and in this case that standard is clearly met um, and and also in terms of the functioning operation of the facility the proposed um, mobile food vendor will comply with the hours of operation if i remember correctly it's 9 a.m to 10 p.m is that can you confirm that when uh, i the proposed one is from 6 to 10 and be allowed longer abstract use permit 6 a.m to 10 p.m p.m that's the hours that the applicant has proposed and for additional hours they can request that through the use permit I see. Okay. Um, all right. And then uh, also importantly, they have an agreement that uh, employees and their customers may use the bathroom or, or is it only for the employees? The agreement says that the employee of the food truck, they can use the bathroom on the site. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so with that, I will, we will I will uh, approve the requested design review or minor conditional use print, excuse me, um, as proposed. And uh, anyone who wishes to appeal this or any other matter that an action has been taken at this meeting have until the end of the business day, October 25th, to mm -hmm. file an appeal. Mr. Gustafson, can I ask a question? Yes. Is it possible to add the name of the proposed mobile food on our resolution? Because there are two others and it's a good idea to have the names on each use permit. I think that's an excellent idea. Um, I would be open to suggestions where that would work best. Um, maybe in the first paragraph, the introductory think, paragraph. Yes, I think the same place. Thank you. And do you have a, a description of its location on the property? It um, says on the back side. So uh, I would I would further add um, a dimension from the back of Sebastopol Road okay. so that we help to ensure that it remains in compliance with the setback requirement from the facility on the adjoining property. Um, so I will, um, uh, I will, uh, well, wait a second. You're, in your findings, you do, do you um, specifically state, and I don't have the resolution in front of me, do you specifically state that the, um, this location uh, exceeds the 200 foot setback on the adjoining uh, facility. I'm looking at it right now and I don't see, I mentioned that in the resolution. So let's take a moment now to add that to the findings there. Mm -hmm. um, that way in the future should, um, for some reason, this 
facility creep closer to Sebastopol Road, we have a very clear standard to enforce um, based on this use permit approval. So I will try to add that language and the name of the proposed use, proposed uh, mobile food vendor on the resolution. Uh, yeah, let me see here. Uh, okay, I, I have the resolution in front of me. Um, So I think uh, the third finding where it says the design location size and operating characteristics in there, I think um, the location in the third line, the location is on a private parking lot. I think if we could say um, here, uh, a number of feet back, from Sebastopol Road. And um, I, would, I would accept uh, a measurement off of Google Maps or scaled off of their site plan. Sure. And should we also mention here 200 feet from other mobile food vendors? Well, so we have conditions of approval and, um, and, and we do, we do say that in, um, in condition number four. So I, I'm, I'm completely oh. satisfied with that language that, that work. Okay. So I will, I will say there's no reason to change the wording in finding number bullet number four. Okay. That's fine. We, we catch it in condition number four. Okay. So I think we're good. So I, our action, you're going to add the name to the, um, to the mo mobile food vendor in the first paragraph. Um, and then uh, we, the resolution otherwise stands as written. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, and uh, this, this matter is approved. So that then brings us through our agenda for today and brings us to adjournment at uh, 1153 a.m. Thank you very much for participating in this zoning administrator meeting of October 15th. Is it 15th? Yes, 15th. Thank you. Have a great day.